Today's episode is amazing. We're going to talk about the Bears and other matchups. You don't want to miss the stars of the week with me, Jay Grizz. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. That's a little Janet reference for you, Jason. Oh, a little, uh... Janet Jackson reference. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's for the, the, what the people want, so the people will get it. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. I'm your host, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Right, joined, per usual of the week, by my goodest, bestest fantasy friend of all time, Jason Moore. You know, you, you have this beautiful intro, but you missed it. Oh, crap. What did I miss this time? It's football time. Oh, man. It's Thursday. It's football time. You're embarrassed now, aren't you? I am a little bit. Well, I'm in a different seat. Mm-hmm. I'm in a different state of mind. Certainly. So I wasn't in the groove of. But you want to know time. what, Mike? What? It's football time. <laughs> do, 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 boom. <laughs> Thank you for picking up where I have left or let everybody down, Jason. On today's show, got the quick question. Go through the news, and it's fantasy forecast time. Break down these matchups. Give our starts of the week, and then. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you stick around. Oh, you don't want to miss... The Boom Boom Kicker of the Week is on today's show. And I have inside sources that have told me the research, the depth of knowledge, like ancient texts Mm -hmm. were involved. The prophecies were read. Astrological signs have been consulted. But most importantly, this might... Be my worst rhyme of all time. I was gonna say up. a rhyme dictionary dot com <laughs> was not used. <laughs> should have been. Let's get into the quick question. Who is the sneakiest snart mm. for the uninitiated? That's the sneakiest start of the week. So who, Jason, is your sneakiest start of week seven? If you're in a PPR league and you are you you, you were just bringing it up. Right before the show, your league of record team, you have four wide receivers, and basically they're all on buy or injured. Yes. So you're you're scraping the waiver wire for multiple ads. If you're a team that is good, you know, good elsewhere, and you just need like that PPR plug-in guy, Tavon Austin. That, yeah, it's he's tough. on the field nonstop right now. The he Eagles, was, if the Eagles are good at anything though, their their slot coverage is is better than usual. Like comparatively to where you can beat them, and you you saw it last week. Yes, Adam Thielen came away with a touchdown, but the monster game was the outside receiver Stephon Diggs. Yeah, th- this is this is why I I say I would rather have Devin Smith, sure. and also I would never actually want Tavon Austin to be on my like. I feel like that's just bad juju for your roster. Sure. All right, who you got, Mike? Well, actually, I'm going to pass it over to our cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz. He wants to chime in. <laughs> That's right. Wow. He says Anthony Miller, and this time we will not chastise him for being a homer. It's actually a great Be- sneaky snark. Because there is a sound process here for Anthony Miller. He plays against the Saints. They're already bad against slot wide receivers. And that's when uh, with P.J. Williams, he was a player, a cornerback, that we've loved to target for quite some time in fantasy football, knowing that if you get a good slot wide receiver, Great things are going to happen against P.J. Williams. Oh, P.J. Williams has been suspended by <laughs> for a few games here. He is out. So apparently, apparently, they will be starting Patrick Robinson? That's what I see, Patrick Robinson. Now, you might be saying, who's Patrick Robinson? Cuckoo, cuckoo. Yeah, and, and by when I say you might be saying, who's Patrick Robinson, I'm talking to Sean Payton. Uh, he's like, who's Patrick Robinson? Well, PFF has him graded in the 30s, which is uh, the lowest score I've ever seen. So, and the score goes to 100, I believe. Right. Yes. When you're bad, you're in the 50s. I was like, wait, this can't be right. So, um, yeah, Anthony Miller 
I mean, look, we don't love the quarterback situation or the passing volume, but we're trying to go deep, sneaky starts. These, these could also be players for, you know, if you're making a fan duel lineup playing DFS and you want the uh, very non-chalk, the hidden gems that are super cheap, could blow up. Those are some uh, names for you. And Mike, who you got? So, and just to follow up, Anthony Miller has shed his shoulder harness, so it looks like looks like we'll get all systems go. We'll see. And my sneaky snar of the week, the newly crowned. Oh, this is my favorite one. The newly crowned because look, heavy is the head, right? Yeah. And the we're... lizard king could not handle it. No. Oh, the so, Lazard King. The Lazard King has had to take over. Part of the news section will cover it, but I'll move it up to now. The Green Bay Packers, they didn't practice, but you all, you still have to submit your report. And of their projections, Devontae Adams did not participate. Marquez Valdez-Scanling did not participate. Geronimo Allison did not participate. I project that MVS will play, but Geronimo is going to be out. Devontae Adams is going to be out. That means Lazard is going to be on the yes. field. See heavy snap counts, and whether he can do anything with that or not, that's up for debate. But you've got Aaron Rodgers, who's spoken highly of him, who targeted him heavily when he came in the game. You have opportunity, and then if you if that one's too gross for you, I'll match Jason slot wide receiver with another one that I like. I like Cole Beasley against Miami. I it they're going to be able to run all over them, yes, but Cole Beasley has been seeing very, very solid target volume, and Miami's very beatable, as you would say. That was – I think that's the kindest – I was trying to, trying to pull the punch that was a little the, bit. That was the kindest thing someone has said about the Dolphins this season. They are very beatable. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. You're very excited I'm for very this one? I'm very excited. Just play the drop. I'm trying to find it. Oh, goo goo ka -choom. The goo Raiders. goo ka -ching. Raiders have signed Darren Waller to a contract extension through 2023. I read that it's about a $9 million per year situation. And look, this, not just fantasy storylines of this coming to life, you know, where we all bought into Darren Waller, said, before week one, it's like, go pick up Darren Waller just in case something happens. The process is very strong, saying that the target volume is going to be there. He's an athletic guy. But the positive news story about Darren Waller and these troubling times of a guy who he almost lost his entire career mm -hmm. to off-the-field issues, addiction, battling, all that, all that stuff. He came back. He recovered. He is just he is doing well as a man. So this is yeah, this is, this is a, a story news. that really should be celebrated by everyone. It's it's a great feel good story. Congratulations, Darren Waller. Yes. On the Saints side of the football, Alvin Kamara, he is dealing with that high ankle type of issue. But the Saints have zi signed signed <laughs> Zach well, they, Zenner. When it's Zach Zenner, you say we zine. have signed. We have signed Zach, Zach Zenner. Zenner. Nine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, it's never good news when a team goes out and just adds depth to a position when the starter is injured but is, is you know, look, he, he's got a good shot to play. You just don't usually go out yeah. and sign the depth because in order to sign the depth, you have to cut someone. They're, they had to cut someone from their roster in order to make room for to add Zach Zenner, and that just means it's, you know, I don't expect Alvin Kamara to play. That's not to say you better prepare for exactly. it. Exactly. He is not like he's ruled out or anything yet, but you have to prepare as if you're not going to have him and then get better news if you do. I mean, obviously Latavius Murray's a a fine play if you are the if you're the Kamara owner, you already had both, you you'll be all right. By fine play, Jason, he does play the Chicago Bears. So, volume uh, volume wise. and volume and scheme I I think are good. Obviously, not a not a good matchup. Raiders wide receiver Tyrell Williams remains sidelined. We have reports from Gruden, Coach Gruden, that it is the itis, the plantar fasciitis. Usually the itis, when you say it, is fumble is a fumbling problem, is the fumbleitis. 
Yeah, it's it's a you very. You can't have two different itises. I can have so many itises. I've got the itis, Jason. And which itis is this? That's the diverticulitis. Oh, fantastic! I'm so sorry to hear. I about have my your... old man disease <laughs> in my bowels. Okay, all right. I the itis can go everywhere. Mason Rudolph has cleared the concussion protocol. I would expect him to play. Sean McVay speaking on Todd Gurley. Quote: He's going to participate in a limited fashion. I think he's on a good pace to hopefully be able to play I on think, Sunday. I think he's on a good pace to hopefully play Sunday. Sounds promising. I had tweeted out yesterday that we we hadn't seen the practice reports yet, but we knew Todd Gurley was dealing with his own thing. And then it came out later that Malcolm Brown was dealing with an ankle injury. Malcolm Brown did not practice on Wednesday. So I, I had tweeted out, Go, go look. Maybe Daryl Henderson's on your waiver wire. You don't know for sure right now if you're going to be able to play him with full confidence. But if Gurley's out, it looks like Malcolm Brown is trending to be out. Holy goodness. Daryl Henderson this weekend is going to go bananas he's a, he's against a, the Atlanta Falcons. He's a great back. It's a great matchup. We loved him coming out of college. I, I, I mean, I am so scared of this offensive line issue. That I, you know, I temper some of the the upside, but he's a hard stash because he's the third guy, and there's right. two guys ahead that aren't necessarily ruled out by any means. You know, they're they're hopeful that both of them are going to play. It's difficult because a lot of times it's the girly owner that is that has the Malcolm Brown, and then you're like, oh, now I need Daryl Henderson. Well, now you're you're taking up three roster spots right. on one team, um, and that's that's a difficult task when nobody's ruled out. You can't move anybody to the IR yet. And speaking of. I tweeted it out. Make sure you're following us on Twitter because, look, we got the podcast coming out five times a week, but we record it once. And then when late breaking news happens, I'm sorry, we can't alter the podcast. It's just not part of what we can do. So follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. I am at FF Hitman. Follow Jason, which <laughs> congratulations to Jason. He was a top 10, uh, top 10 in accuracy this past week, crushing yet again. Thank you, sir. You follow him at Jason FFL. Follow the cardboard bear extraordinaire at J Grizz FFL one Z. That's right. I was I was wondering if you were gonna know. And Andy, if you want to follow his ice cream escapades that have been happening <laughs> at Andy Holloway, and our Instagram handles are the same as our personals. This man eats way too much ice cream. <laughs> I mean, there's just no other way to put it. Andy eats ice cream on a daily basis. Like that's like a child's dream. I want it's a it's a day, so I get ice cream. He he grew up and went. I can have ice cream every day. If he thought he could survive, he would be an ice creamitarian and eat only ice cream. Is that he'd have the uh, ice cream itis? As, <laughs> as you would say. Well, well, that's a problem. If you if you eat only ice and cream, and then he would have diverticulitis. No, you're you're gonna get the the beatus. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> you go with that route. Mitchell Trubisky was a full participant in Wednesday's practice. He will likely be back. Chris Herndon reading the tea leaves of his activation. Maybe a bit presumptive. He is not practicing still with his hamstring. I'm expecting him not to be out. Reports of Kenyon Drake being traded have intensified. They went from whispers in the, in the bushes to full-on shouting, where Ian Rappaport is being the messenger for the right. team saying, Hey, the Dolphins would love to trade Kenyon Drake. Come send us offers. Ian Rappaport, more than any other like mainstream uh, NFL news guy, I feel like does things for agents and for teams that are clearly they've they've asked. Certainly, Jason, you are not accusing Rappaport of a quid pro quo. I would never do that. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, the Dolphins want to trade Kenyon Drake. And if a team has a running back need, I think Kenyon Drake is a good back. It's impossible to be a good fantasy back on the Miami Dolphins. And they're able to trade him because, hey, it's, oh, it's gosh. me, Mark Waltenberg. I I'm balling out. I can't wait for Rappaport's tweets to have hashtag ad hashtag, at, the end, hashtag, at the end of them. Say hi to your mother for me. <laughs> The Dolphins are willing to trade Kenyon Drake. Hashtag sponsored posts. Yes. Uh, and again, Devontae Adams did not participate. Pay attention to what's happening for the Packers. Thursday night updates. The OG Lizard King is not going to play. 
Sammy Watkins, that is. Emmanuel Sanders is expected to play tomorrow on the show. We will have in or out. If you want those Foot Clan game day alerts, we provide those as a friendly service for the supporters of the show at jointhefoot.com. And do not forget, Sunday Live, one hour before Sunday kickoff, I will be streaming live wherever streams are available. Jason, wherever they are. In the woods. Those are the Jay Grizz streams. Yeah. But I'll go through the late breaking news. I'll I'll talk through some start sit questions. Go through the process. See me tilt my face off this week. It, it's it's going to be fantastic. Speaking of tilting your face off and the this news that you just covered, the whole Devonte Adams didn't mm-hmm. participate Wednesday. You know, as a Devonte Adams owner, everywhere I had him. I mean, he's probably one of my most common. Uh, through all my main leagues, the the piece I have in common the most. And when you are the Devonta Adams owner, it feels like I, he's not he's never coming back. Yeah, he's, I, 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 he's out for yeah. the rest of eternity. <laughs> I just it it's the worst when you've got a superstar. It's like oh, you got a toe problem, and I don't want to be like that because it's a serious problem. But like, have you ever had an ingrown toenail? Jason? Oh my gosh, no! I am way too big a baby to deal with something like that. Impossible. For well, me. you you know it's not you 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 can't just choose not to get them. They happen. Well, no, I choose I choose not to have them, Mike. <laughs> my point is, an ingrown toenail will is devastating. That and that's not turf toe. Just saying that a toe injury is a it's a real deal. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of impactful fantasy news. I get reports that well, you want to know what's going on with Devontae Adams. Sleeper's going to let you know. And before we get into the matchups, I want to thank today's sponsor, Roman. Losing your hair can be devastating, Jason. Regardless of when it happens, it's a crisis. But look, you're no less of a man if you don't have hair, and you're no thank less you. of a man if you're concerned about hair loss. I'm concerned about it, but I have a full, luscious head of hair, but I know that if things take a turn for the worst, I am reaching out to Roman. I can connect with a U.S. licensed physician for a free online evaluation, see what my treatment options are, and they offer. Roman offers an FDA-approved over-the-counter and prescription options. If the doctor decides medication is appropriate for you, boom, Roman's going to deliver it right to your door, discreet packaging, free two-day shipping. Go to GetRoman.com footballers to start your free online visit. And Roman members, look, you want to get started with that that free online visit, free two-day shipping, again, GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. And, hey, if you would like to support this show, we are an independent uh, podcast. And, and if you want to help support, you can go to Join the Foot, become an official Foot Clan member for that support. <laughs> Thank you, Jay Grizz. That's, I mean, scaring people into that support. Do you know sport. how much salmon costs? <laughs> Seriously, he eats a <laughs> lot of salmon. He's a bear. Um, I mean, we got to print it out, but you know, do you know how much toner costs? Ink is expensive. Color toner. But if you're not aware uh, that <laughs> you know the official Foot Clan members at jointhefoot.com, we we support you back, and we have all of our special tools, our our start sit tool that you can use for players, our flex rankings. Game day alerts, which I think are invaluable. An extra show every week. Yes, an extra show answering your questions every week. And I think the most important, coolest new feature we've made in a long time, the Stream Finder is... I'm going to go ahead and say it. It's going to be up this week. Whoa, come I, we're on, We're going to finish it this week. We're working on it. It's unbelievably cool. Uh, you could check all that out and support the show at jointhefoot.com. Fantasy Forecast. Reminder, teams on by. The Browns, the Bucks, the Panthers, and the Steelers. Let's get into it, Jason. The Raiders. Somehow the winning Raiders. Three and two. Congratulations, Oakland. They're taking on the Packers. The Packers are five and one. It's a 46 and a half point over under. The Packers are favored by a field goal and a half. I guess not and a half because then that would be more than the three and a half line. If right. it was a field goal and a half, you know, it would be four and a half. If it was a f- – oh, you're saying a half yeah. of a field goal. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I just wanted to make sure people know I had I can do – Yeah, I'm actually proud of you. Man. Thank you. Quarterbacks, Derek Carr, you playing him? No, sir. Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> are you playing him 
I like. Are you playing him against Oakland with confidence that he's going to be a top twelve quarterback this week? Yeah, I I am this week. This is a matchup that's uh, that's winnable. He's right now my quarterback ten on the week. Um, it, it it's worrisome. What about the wide receiver situation? Yes, that's what I was getting. It's worrisome without Geronimo Allison, without Devonte Adams, but no. yeah, exactly <laughs> the Lazard King. We're putting a lot of faith. In an undrafted player who's played like 10 snaps in his career. But he's 6'5", and Aaron Rodgers loves him. <laughs> I mean, look, there are there is a little bit of depth to the wide receivers. I, I'm, you know, I'm, not, I'm not trying to build up a Jake Kumaro and, uh, you know, and the Lazard King into something they're not. But I do think in this matchup with Aaron Rodgers, you're, you're safe-ish. I mean... Is he a must start over all options? No. If if I've got Josh Allen against the Dolphins, I would look that way. But this is this is still Aaron Rodgers, and while the Raiders are three and two, they're not exactly the scariest of matchup. Twentieth against twentieth against, against fantasy quarterbacks, nineteen and a half points per game at the running back position. Aaron Jones, he has the fifth most red zone touches in the NFL. He's seeing the third highest percent of carries with seven or fewer in the box. We like to see that. But what's your confidence level starting him? Jamal Williams came in, looked like the better back last week coming off of his scary concussion. Yeah, I, I'm I'm confident uh, enough in Aaron, in Aaron Jones to play him. I don't expect Jamal Williams to be the leader in the timeshare this week. When you say he came out and looked like the better back, I think both guys – Looked really good, other than the two mistakes that Aaron Jones made. And Jamal Williams looked better on the ground, though. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, it's, he had it's a, he subjective, had a, but to me, he Jamal Williams looked much better. He was also far more productive. But the thing is about saying he looked better is, uh, of course, he was productive. He he ripped off a really long run, um, so he was much more productive for that. And Aaron Jones was was benched for the fumble and the drop. But we've got a large enough sample size to say. Jamal Williams isn't the better runner, and I don't think just because he looked better on a couple of snaps last week. Now, here's the issue. We're, we're talking about Aaron Jones. We're talking about Jamal Williams. They're, the way that I see it is is a 50-50 or a 49-51 you know, situation. They are a real-time share problem because – uh, you know, this is a little shorter rest for them. I fully expect it to be a 50-50 split. And while the Raiders aren't a scary matchup for quarterback, they are top 10. They're number seven right now on the season as points given up to the running back position. So it's not a great matchup. I'm not slamming Aaron Jones in my lineups in my DFS because I think he's going to have a great game. It's just he's a starting asset at running back that you pretty much are forced to start because there's not enough of them and they could see even more usage the with, with a game plan featuring both running backs with all the injuries to the wide receiver Josh Jacobs who if you were playing the game as a lot of us were that how a few we, weeks how have we not made a Josh Jacobs Jingleheimer Schmidt I feel like I've done that before I've at least done it around the office but oh, man. Josh Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. See, that's just fun. <laughs> I mean, I'm down with that. All right. You know, that's, that's right on brand for me. But uh, the game I'm referring to is a few weeks ago, you could see that the breakout was coming because the schedule was going to open up a little bit for the Raiders. Starting with the Packers here off of the bye week, they are the Packers are 29th against running backs, 26.3 points per game. So it was going to be, hold on, don't you don't have to buy Josh Jacobs yet. Because he's going to play the Bears, and then he's got a bye week. You could buy him real low. And then he explodes <laughs> on the Bears and ruins all of that. So if you had Josh Jacobs, congratulations, because you still have Josh Jacobs. He is going to be fantastic. He is going to be fantastic. Uh, my start of the week that we'll get into later is one spot behind Josh Jacobs, who I see as an easy top 12 running back this week. Uh, the matchup is is fine. His talent is great. They're coming off the bye. Every, every, all, all systems go. Now, Oakland has their own problem at the wide receiver position. If Tyrell Williams is out, holy crap, man. They just traded for Zay Jones a week ago. They traded for Trevor Davis a couple weeks ago. Hunter Renfro. I mean, what do they do? Darren, and we won't, Darren Waller doesn't need to be talked about because he's a – absolute must play every single week and now he's got the bag yes 
But at the wide receiver position, what are they going to do? Uh, I think they are going to rely on the running game. And I, and I think Zay Jones, you know, we, we opened the show with who's a sneaky snart. Zay Jones is a sneaky snart. I actually think that he's going oh, that's to – that's so gross. It's gross, but, you know, I, I still think he's – a, a he's not, no, he's I, not good, Jason. I have he has a, one of the worst catch rates in I know. NFL history. I know he has one of the worst catch rates in NFL history. He has never had a good quarterback as far as uh, accuracy throwing him the ball, uh, but he has a he has <laughs> a lot of the itis on the drops. Is it, can you do a the, drop itis? Of course. I've told you. The itis is very universal. You could do it anywhere. Whenever there's a problem, you just say, oh, man, it must be the itis. So you would not – plug in Zay Jones as a sneaky no, start. No. I mean, I will say this. I'll play Trevor Davis over Zay Jones. Really? Yes. We, you, it's it's hard to crown uh, Zay Jones. We don't know. Is Zay Jones how much is he even going to be on the field? Sure. That you I mean it's very fair. They might He may not even play. Yes, he may not even play. Yeah. Go I with, will still as of right now, <laughs> knowing that he may not get on the field. I will make you a Zay Jones, yes, Trevor Davis. Yes, Monica. hold on. I got to find that button. <laughs> I have no idea where this it is. This is the yes. water bet. This is the lowest level bet in the history of the fantasy footballers. We just made Zay Jones a Z V Trevor Davis. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> but now we got skin in the game <laughs> and a reason to watch the, the – you know, I will say this. I expect this game – which has one of those middle of the line over unders to disappoint in, in, in general. So maybe that speaks to if you're at Aaron Rodgers and I say, okay, you, yeah, you, you could start him as a top 12 guy. Maybe you do look for a higher upside because while I, I think he's going to be around that 12, I, I don't see him being able to have the, a blow up game. You know, would you, here's, here's a gross one. Would you rather start Aaron Rodgers or Jared Goff? Jared Goff. That one, look, I get everyone's super mad right now at Jared Goff because he was terrible. I can't. He's playing the Falcons, man. I cannot. I have not this week more than any player or situation that I can remember in the last half a decade we've been doing this show. I can't get Jared Goff and the Rams offensive line out of my mind. I can't stop thinking about the situation, reading up on it. I, I like, I don't know. I'm so terrified of this situation because – and we'll talk about it later. So oh, I, let me comfort you with this. Okay, I'm going to tell you about a quarterback. This was a line he he just put up on the Atlanta Falcons three weeks ago. He completed 67 percent of his passes, threw for 227 yards and three passing touchdowns, a passer rating of nearly 130. Does he have alliteration in his name? That quarterback doesn't have a job anymore. It's Marcus Mariota. That's real helpful. Jared Goff is a great start this week. Okay, you just got to deal with it. Uh, moving on to the next game. Rex, in, look up a little peek behind the curtain. I'm playing Alan Lazard in our League of Record right now, and I'm playing him in our Dynasty League. So if you want to go down with that ship, oh, come with me. Go get cold-blooded. Come with me. Dolphins, Bills. <laughs> that was the over-under, actually, that I just vomited out. 39. But the Bills are... No, is this... Yeah, the Bills are favored by... Uh, they're favored by 17? 17 points. That is... That's just unbelievable. Because the Bills... Usually when a team is favored by that much, which is not common, right? Like That's it, a Patriots it's, spread. It, it's pretty much exclusive for the Patriots or when the Chiefs are on fire in, right. a, in, a, in, a, in a... But the point is, it's a, it's a prolific offense mixed with a good matchup. But this is not a prolific offense. But Vegas is saying they're going to score a lot. 28 points. Now, I do temper that, you know. How many defensive scores that, are That's included? what I was going to say. I temper the Vegas line um, when you're, when, if you're, if you make your own rankings or whatever and you're looking at projected team totals, you can't give the Bills offense the projected team total of 28 points. Quarterbacks have scored 24 or more fantasy points against Miami in every game except for last week with and that was Case Keenum. Josh Allen is a mighty fine start. Ryan Fitzpatrick will be taking the helm for the now bench Josh Rosen by the second half. Yeah, Josh Rosen will be in. Josh Rosen might be back in at the running back position. 
Kenyon Drake, the possibly traded Kenyon Drake. Do you have any interest against the Buffalo? Bills? No, there's there's no there's no single player. Let's on just the let's just get this out of the way. Okay, uh, the Dolphins running backs. Are you playing them? Nope. What about the wide receivers? Nope. Okay. Even with with so, Gunslinger look, Fitzpatrick, Devontae Parker is actually exciting to me if Fitzpatrick can make it through this game and retain the starting role. But I don't think this is the matchup where I'm going to take the shot. Not Nor against am I. the Bills. All right, the Bills side of the ball. Running back Devin Singletary. It looks like he's going to be back. He is, wow, he's tied for eighth among running backs with five runs of 15-plus yards, and he hasn't played since week two. He is electric. Uh, he was my week two start of the week where he got a touchdown and everything looked like the arrow was pointing up, and then he pulled the hammy. Got the itis. The hammy-itis? <laughs> no, I'm going to say that one don't work. The ham come on. He had look, he came down with a terrible case of muscleitis. Okay. Better, still bad. Um he he's electric. I've Thi tried Thitis. Uh <laughs> Al. Al Borland. Can you mute that his microphone? Great. That was it's terrible. It's a play on words. It's for the sophisticated. Thitis? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like it. Are you still working on muting his microphone? Um, all right, so uh, I've been trying to scoop up, and by scoop up, I mean trade for Devin Singletary everywhere. I have failed. I have, I've not gotten an owner to be able to trade him to me, but I do think he is, I feel like in general, in leagues out there, you should be able to get him. He hasn't really done anything. Sure. He hasn't broken out. If you look at his carry numbers, they're pretty terrifying. I mean, he's he's really not he has, touched the ball much. He has 10 attempts on the season. Right, 10 so, I mean, you should be able to trade for a guy that, going into week seven, has 10 career rushing attempts. According to the Football Outsiders metrics, Buffalo ranks number one in adjusted line yards. Meanwhile, Miami is allowing the second most rushing yards per game. I, I think you can start Singletary, and I think you can start Frank Gore if you're in a desperate spot. John Brown, Johnny B, has been getting it done. He's, he's been all right, nothing explosive yet. But he at least has a connection with Josh Allen. What's your temperature on John Brown? My, look, my temperature is if you – he is a must-play this week. We're going to talk about him a little bit later because – Oh, my. Uh, I mean, you've got a guy who is leading he, – he's got a great market share for the team. His depth of target is fantastic. He's got big blow-up potential. I forgot he blew up week one. Right, 123 yes. in a touchdown. But after that, it's just been real steady, though. Seven for 72, four for 51, five for 69, and five for 75. So he's getting enough targets in every game to be a startable asset. Yeah, he's, and, he's and a then, weekly, yeah. And then you get the matchup against the Dolphins. That's, right. what you're, that's what you're taking to the bank and hoping for a big game. I would, I would really not want to bench John Brown in this matchup. Cole Beasley, like I said, he's a sneaky start. I'm not expecting huge things, but maybe you're in a tough position. Dawson Knox, tight end for the Buffalo Bills. He's... Sort of interesting. The Dolphins are 22nd against I, fantasy tight ends. I don't think you need him here. I mean, I, I don't think the the Bills need him here as a as a pass catcher. You know, usually when you've got a, a difficult defense, you need to scheme things and sneak the, the tight end out for the touchdown or something. I think they're just going to beat, you know, beat the tar out of the Dolphins with base, with their base offense just, uh, you know uh, – the, their main weapons are just going to succeed, and so I'm not totally into Dawson Knox in this matchup. All right, crazy question because here we are. Buffalo defense or the New England defense? Somehow oh. you've got both. Somehow you were tearing it up with New England. You saw the Buffalo schedule, and you said, I'm going to leverage this. I'm going to pick them up. You've got both. Now you can only play one. This would be the first time I think you can actually recommend benching the – Patriots defense. I, I would, would play Buffalo. I would rather have the Bills defense uh, over the Dolph or over the Patriots this week. Rams, Falcons. The Rams are coming in at five hundred. The Falcons are one and five, but we do have a delicioso fifty-four point over under. The Rams are favored by three. We've kind of talked about Jared Goff a little bit. We're going to cover him even more because he is my start of the week. I ain't scared to play Goff in this matchup. Matt Ryan leads the league in attempts, completions, air yards. He's doing his thing. Matt Ryan is tearing it up. He's a weekly must play. 
Let's get into more interesting questions than the quarterbacks. Well, before we move on from the quarterbacks, I do want to point out one thing because I my big worry with Goff and with the whole Rams offense is the offensive line. Their offensive line has been trash, and then they lost their left guard. They traded for a bust and, and have nobody to plug that hole. And when you put a bust on your starting lineup, they don't move around very much. Right, because they are because they're in bronze. fact made out of stone. Yeah, or stone or, for sure. Um, that's a great point, Mike. Thank but you. But what I was saying is that my worry with Goff is pressure. He he doesn't do well under pressure, and he has nobody to protect him. But then the Falcons are like a soothing balm because mm, an ointment, an ointment. Kyler Murray and uh, for the <laughs> Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson were on record pace both of them for sacks and then both of them collectively the two guys over the last two weeks have only taken one sack between four games but each one of those guys got to play the Falcons right and so it's like because the Falcons have five sacks on the year yeah they don't they don't pressure anybody no, not scared at the running back if Todd Gurley plays do you play him Yes. What do you expect? Do you, are you hoping for that 90% snap share we saw before he had to miss a week? Or There's, you think he's like a more of a timeshare with Mr. Henderson? I, I think he's definitely more of a timeshare. Uh, there's no way he's coming in getting 90% of the snaps. He'd come in get 65% of the snaps. But uh, the matchup with the Falcons is pretty good. Uh, I think especially if they're using him in the passing game the way they were before he went out, that's where you're going to beat the Falcons. The, the Falcons have been, in the entire Dan Quinn era, so incredibly bad at stopping passing to the running back position. And Sean McVay is smart enough to realize that and get Todd Gurley or Malcolm Brown or Daryl Henderson the ball in space. If you watched, there was a play last week uh, where David Johnson snuck out they just ran all their wide receivers. Oh, yes. Just nine routes. Just, yeah. just run to the end zone. And the entire Falcons defense <laughs> went. His, and then here's David Johnson catching the ball. And there's nobody within. His like, separation was, I think, 30 yards. Yeah, no exaggeration. It was at least 15 yards. And some of the players was 30. It was unbelievable. It was like, that's not an NFL defense. Right. Delightful. Now, on the other side of the field, Devonta Freeman. Jason, I keep trying to tell you that you can start Devonta Freeman in four straight weeks. He has been very fantasy relevant. Can you finally acquiesce and agree that it's time to play Devonta Freeman with confidence? Um, No. <laughs> what does the man need to do? He needs to retire. I, I don't – I just <laughs> – he hurt me. Over 100 yards, two receiving touchdowns last week. Two weeks ago, 70 total yards, a receiving touchdown. Three weeks ago, 100 total yards. Four weeks ago, almost 100 yards. Like You are a crazy person. I, look, okay. I've got to give, this good, is, this I've is, got to give good analysis for the you are, you are the pen is, is blue right now. Yes, no. You, you start Devonta Freeman. I know you start Devonta Freeman. Right now, I've got him ranked as a clear-cut starter. He's my running back 15. But you asked the question, can I trust him? And no. Okay, so you personally. I personally. What about the, the collective you as in yeah, the listeners? The listeners should put him in the lineup. I mean, he's he's my running back 15. It's a fine matchup. The Rams aren't terrible. They're 22nd not, against fantasy running backs. Yeah, but exactly. They're not they're not great either. Um, so, it, yeah, go ahead and start him. I want you to know while you do start him that I will never trust him again. Fair. Julio Jones was waltzing. He was doing a tango into a delicious matchup. And then the Rams <laughs> traded for Jalen Ramsey, who I have to assume will be out there. It seemed that all the back ailments, they disappeared when he put on a Rams jersey. Mm -hmm. Healing powers. They they, they were incredibly uh, powerful. That jersey. Did you see... Did you see the the introduction when he met Sean McVay? Oh, my, the hand, the the professional high five. Like these guys have been best friends for that couldn't have been the first multiple years. That couldn't have been the first take, right? No, they did that a couple times. We watched take five. Like we're we're we we've been friends for a decade. Uh, there's we no can't high five way. like that. There's no way we could go in I for think, that good of a <laughs> high five. It, that was a whip crack. It was unbelievable. So obviously he's going to shut down 
Uh, Julio. He won't shut down Julio Jones. It just it stinks that the matchup was going to be great for Julio, and now it's a little bit more concerning. But you're still playing him. Well, now that that brings uh, so light you have to, to the, pivot the other options. Your Calvin Ridley, Muhammad Sanu, obviously Austin Hooper is uh, locked and loaded in there. But if you had to choose between Muhammad Sanu and Calvin Ridley, who bizarrely keeps coming off the field, he's you know he, he should be pretty much an every snap player, and his utilization has. He was on the field last week for 59% of offensive snaps against Arizona it's so while bizarre. they're throwing the ball. It was I, I was at the game, and I was like, why do they keep bringing him out of the game? So who do you choose between those two players? <sighs> Floor ceiling. If I want safety, I'll go with Mosinu. If I want to have an actual real impactful fantasy game, we'll go with Calvin Ridley. So go with Calvin Ridley. That's your answer. Fair. The Rams wide receivers, meanwhile, will take on the Falcons defense, who they are ranked 30th against fantasy wide receivers. I think this is a get-right game, but can Jared Goff, the king Jared Goffrey, can he support all three of these guys in this matchup? Um, the Falcons are going to say yes. The Falcons are going to say do whatever you want to us. So all three are in play. What about... He was very disappointing this last week, but Gerald Everett. Uh, no, no. I, I, I said this two weeks ago r right after the breakout that I, I did not trust that breakout. That I don't think this is a level up for Gerald Everett. Uh, that was a matchup play against the Seattle Seahawks, plus they lost Brandon Cooks in that. I, I'm, not, I'm not riding the Gerald Everett train. I never was. I think you can start him. I would go back to it. Vikings, Lions. The Vikings are four and two. The Lions are two, two and one. Asterisk, right? Uh, asterisk for the, for the Lions on that loss, right? Because they clearly it should be a loss when you tie the Arizona Cardinals. No, I mean them. With, oh. I'm talking about Green Bay. I'm just sorry. I'm just trying to stir the pot. Yeah, I'm gonna poke the hornet's nest. That's so stupid. All right, over under is 45 points. The Vikings are favored by a point. Kirk Cousins, he has he, – you have to say that he is heating up after these last two weeks, uh, especially last week when Stephon Diggs went nuclear against the Philadelphia Eagles secondary. NBA Jam rules, Jason. Is Kirk Cousins going to be on fire? Nope. Uh, this is <laughs> – he, he's been top ten the last okay. two weeks. He's looked much better. That's all great. However, the, the Lions' defense is bad against the run. And what the Vikings want to do is run. The last couple matchups for Kirk Cousins have been very predictably good against the run, bad against the pass. They were matchups where we streamed Kirk Cousins and plugged him in our lineup because you knew he was going to have success. I don't think he's going to have a great game for fantasy purposes against the Lions. They rank 30th right now against the running back position. So... This is this is a Dalvin Cook game. I this is the type of game that I think you could see Kirk Cousins go out there and throw the ball twenty times, and then you're like, oh, scratching your eyes out. Matthew Stafford leads the league in average depth of target and highest percent of twenty plus yard attempts. He is slinging the ball down the field like a man who actually has a healthy back this year, and he's year. slinging it to these routes downfield that are so. They're just so smooth. They're oh, we're talking I mean, about those the, You know, oh, they, look, they are. Oh, there it is, Kenny G. Kenny G has leveled up. He is the oh, they're so smooth. Kenny, he has leveled up in a way that I I did not see coming. Uh, Kenny because Galladay. He had the opportunity last year when Marvin Jones went down, and he did not do it. But Kenny Galladay said. I'm not one of these year two guys. Yeah. I'm a year three type of fella. He's got a 26.9% target share, the third most air yards, and he is the only wide receiver to have eight or more targets in every single game in the NFL. So obviously, if you've had him, you've been starting him, you're going to continue starting him. The matchup is worrisome from yesteryear. You know what I mean? Like the the yeah. the Vikings defense has been this – Scary matchup for everyone always. Obviously, it was fine last week for uh, Carson Wentz. He had a great game, and Alshon Jeffrey had a had a great game. 
you're not going away from Kenny Galladay the rest of the season. I agree. What about Marvin Jones, a wide receiver three play? He's, yeah, I mean, you can do worse than him. You look at his results and you go, man, should I even roster Marvin Jones? But if you look at the – He the, was almost on fire coming off of games, 101 and a touchdown, 77 yards, but then just – Two for 17 against the Green Bay Packers. And the two for 17 had so many giant air yard plays, miscues. You know, the one where it was like, oh, it should have been pass interference. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but there, he was he was a couple breaks away from having another great game. So, yeah, I, I, I think you could start Marvin Jones in this matchup as well as a, as a three. Kyle Rudolph is still a nope. TJ Hawkinson dropped another touchdown this past week. Are you rolling with TJ Hawkinson? No, TJ Dropinson needs to uh Well here Jason, here's the deal. People need help at the tight end position. Like they, they are struggling. There's the like OJ Howard, if if you were still counting on him, he's on by. I mean, you got people need a solution here. If you were still counting on OJ Howard, congratulations that he's on by. However, I will say this: the craziest stat that Greg I saw. Olson's on by the the craziest stat that I saw this last week was that OJ Howard last week in the NFL ran the most routes of any tight end. They're just punishing in him in the National Football League. How could he run the most? There's no tight end last week that ran more passing routes than OJ Howard, and he still was terrible. TJ um, Hawkinson or Gerald Everett? Jason Witten. I mean that's my that's that's my answer. When you're around this right. gross area, um, I think he is your pivot play this week. Uh, over because you're right, people do need help. I just don't want to help them with, you know, I'm not helping them by saying go play someone that can't catch the ball. Sure, uh, T.J. Hawkinson should have a great line on his season right now, but he's got something going on in his head where he can't catch. Well, maybe he breaks through this week. Texans. Colts, the Texans are 4-2, and two, the Colts are 3-2. and two. They are coming off of their bye, a 48-point over under. The Colts are favored by just a point. Deshaun Watson, the no, you look, you're playing Deshaun Watson. Ja jo or Jacoby Brissett, Jason. Oh, whoa. Hey, where's the beef? Where's the beef? Beef Brissett. Is, it, is he streamable? Um, yeah, I, I, I think he's streamable. He's been a pretty solid – he's not an upside guy. So when you say you're streaming, it depends on it depends on your roster. You got a loaded roster, and you just need someone to not go out there and put one and a half points up last week like Jared Goff did. Then yeah, Brissett is fine. He's been a top twelve quarterback but three that, of his five games. It's also been on the strength of an outrageous touchdown percentage that you saw kind of drift into the nethers. You didn't see that drift into the nethers. What you saw against Kansas City was them dominate the ground game against Kansas City in a game plan to come out on top, and they did. They won that game. The three previous games, uh, Tennessee, Atlanta, Oakland, those were three games where he – I mean, you're right. It's an outrageously high touchdown rate, but I don't think that came screaming to a halt um, because of regressing to the mean. I, and I give a lot of credit to head coach Frank Reich, and this is a team coming off of a bye. So Frank Reich with extra time to prepare, I, I think Deshaun Watson is just nuclear. He's he's yep. going to be able to beat the the Colts defense. And so, yeah, I think you could start Kobe uh, Jacoby Brissett. Carlos Hyde, three games in a row with 15-plus touches. Are you trusting Carlos Hyde in this matchup? Uh, yeah, I mean, I this is this is one of those running backs where – He's an RB3 for me, which means you can start him. Uh, I've got leagues where I'm starting less, and I wish I had Carlos Hyde. But I don't, you know, you're never excited about Carlos Hyde. This isn't a great matchup. The The Colts are top 10 right now, only giving up 19.6 fantasy points per game to the running back position. And Carlos Hyde is splitting that with Duke Johnson. So, you know, a flex if he's necessary to your roster, sure. I hope I can go elsewhere. Marlon Mack, if you've got him, you got to be excited that he is. He's back off of the bye week. He's averaging over 20 carries a game. The matchup against the Texans, it's beatable. They're right in the middle of the road. 
at the wide receiver position, DeAndre Hopkins. Yes, you're playing him. Will Fuller, he was he had his breakout game, one of the best of all time. Followed that up with a bit of a disappointment, but if you watched what happened, he dropped two touchdowns. Yes. Now they were more difficult receptions, so this isn't a TJ Hawkinson situation, but he did not come down. The the regression hit, he didn't hit on his big plays. How are you treating him this week? The Colts are 18th against fantasy wide receivers. Yeah, I mean, he's a big play guy that you can throw in your lineup and and hope for a monstrous week. The you know, we we've we said this before the season about Will Fuller, he's boom bust, and that's what you're going to get. Unfortunately, if you look at the rate of boom bust, he's got six games and five yeah. busts. That's not that's not that's not good, Bob. Thirty five percent of his targets are going for. 20 or more yards. It's, it's outrageous with the big play. T.Y. Hilton, is he going to be back? Are you going to be happy that you played T.Y. Hilton? Yeah, you're going to be very happy. The Texans are 26th against wide receivers. He has been a key component to Jacoby Brissett. He's got the extra time to have rested. Um, I, um, yes, T, you, you're thankful. As the T.Y. Hilton owner, you're like, yes, I could finally play him again. <laughs> All right. Okay, what do we do, Jason? What do we do with Darren Fells or Jordan Akins? Darren Fells, I mean, there's was the, almost there's my fantasy production. Darren Fells was almost my start of the week. And if you're out there and you're saying I've got to play Gerald Everett or Darren Fells, I'm playing Darren Fells right now. The Colts are not good against tight end. I mean, they're they're very bad. They're thirtieth against tight end. You've got Darren Fells who has been balling out. I mean, he was when on our buy and sell it was the line set kind of at five receptions which I mean, that that could easily happen against the Colts. So, I would rather start Darren Fells than those other just trash trash titles. Okay, well what about the the Colts side? Eric Ebron, Jack Doyle or Darren Fells? Darren Fells. All righty. And this is because of the matchup difference. I think the Texans match up better against tight end than the Colts do. Cardinals Giants. It's going to be interesting. A 49 point over under the Cardinals are 2, 3 and 1. The Giants are 2 and 4. 2 and fro. The implied team total the Giants 26, Cardinals 23. Close game, the Giants favored by 3 at home. Two of their last 3 games now with Danny Dimes they have one. The other was unwinnable. Now, did you just call him Danny Dimes? I did. It, uh, I thought you were you were I, the I one do. pushing the train. Yes, I don't. You're like in Danny the back. Dimes. Yeah, that's my bad. But and then you we you need proliferate it. We, we need a we need a pivot. We I mean we've got Manuel Jones, but I'm not a big fan of that I'm either. Not, uh, yeah. So that was a fun pun, but yeah. But like Foot Clan, let's Daniel do, Jones. Let's do something with Daniel Jones here. Yeah. We need to figure that out. But Daniel Jones, you can play him. I am streaming him in our league of record after I was denied Josh Allen. The quarterbacks have allowed – or the Cardinals have allowed five QB1 performances. You know, Do you know the only quarterback who had, was not a, uh, a top ten guy? Who? Russell Wilson. <laughs> That's because uh, Chris Carson is, said, Russ, you take the game off. There was also a defensive score. Uh, quickly, Jason, Daniel Jones or Kirk Cousins? Uh, Daniel Jones. Daniel uh, Jones or Carson Wentz against Dallas? Carson Wentz. Daniel Jones or Jimmy Handsome Garoppolo against Washington? Daniel Jones. All right. And Kyler, you're starting him every week regardless of matchup. Well, you're very much starting him in this one with the matchup. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Saquon Barkley is practicing in full. We rejoice from the hills. That the beast is back. You got to be very happy that you have Saquon. Arizona's allowing 140 yards from scrimmage to the running back position. Yeah, remember when I was like, Chris Carson said, yeah. hey, Russ, take the game off? Sure. Saquon, I'm going to, I think Saquon is better than Chris Carson. Okay. So that's a hot take. Thank you. So I'm you here to spit, spit fire. <laughs> number, number two overall pick, better than late seventh round draft pick. That's what I believe in oh. my heart. Okay. David Johnson has been sensational. His backup, Chase Edmonds. How there's the back injury is still going on for David Johnson. They're still 
talking about it. Uh, Chase Edmonds, five for thirty-four on the ground. He has been a monster. He's he's getting that the the backup running back those the the huge yards per carry that we've seen for guys like Alexander Madison as well. This does frequently happen. Also, two for thirty-three through the air and a receiving touchdown against the Atlanta Falcons. This is another great matchup, and it's the same situation as last week. We were saying if you need a start, you can start Chase Edmonds. But he's not a guy, you know, if you told me I have to start Chase Edmonds or Carlos Hyde, I would still go Carlos Hyde because you're talking about a backup role here. Um, David Johnson, while he, he's been given some practice off and missed practice last week, he wasn't limited in pretty much any way uh, last week. The matchup is good, though. I mean, the, the, the only position that the Giants are good against is tight end. The Cardinals barely even sniff their tight ends. <laughs> Is that a is that a it, phrase? It just put a real strange S image into my head. Their tight ends. They're just gathered around. Hmm. You never want to sniff the tight end. That's that'll okay. get you in trouble. <laughs> Flagrant sniffing on the defense. Larry Fitzgerald. We've got him as our consensus number eighteen. Five or more receptions in every game. A near twenty three percent target share. You could play him. Christian Kirk. We don't know for sure if he is playing, but if he is in, is he right back into your lineup, Jason? If he, yeah, I mean, if he's practicing and active this week, which we'll we'll know more tomorrow, um, then I would plug him in. This is a juicy, juicy matchup for all the Cardinals involved. The latest report from Cliffy K is he wants Kirk at a hundred percent. Sure. So, may, I mean, that that's the thing. He he's if he's active, then you know, okay, he's ready to go, and they're not going to limit him because if they're going to limit him and by not playing him um this is a game i i believe the reason that i was higher on D daniel jones and some of these other quarterbacks that you were uh, asking about other than Wentz, despite patrick peterson coming back is the cardinals defense is trash and the giants defense is trash this is one of those games where i fully expect a bonanza a back and okay. forth high rate of play um, I, I think there's going to be a ton of fantasy points in this game. And I think that Golden Tate is a fine start. Arizona's giving up the second most points to the slot position. That's what Golden Tate is. Yeah, you said it. Patrick Peterson is back. That's helpful for other matchups. But considering that the best two wide res or pass catchers on this team right now are Golden Tate in the slot and Evan Ingram, who Patrick Peterson will not be guarding. No, uh, no one will be guarding. Fair. Very, very fair. Evan Ingram is going to go off against the worst-ranked defense against fantasy tight ends. Jason, we're going a little bit long today, but those things happen. We're going to get into our starts of the week. Starts of the week. Uh, I'll kick it off right, right away with Kyler Murray as my start of the week. He's going to go nuclear this week. The Giants That's have three nuclear references in this show for those counting at home. <sighs> bomb uh the Gi <laughs> the giants have allowed 285 passing yards per game kyler murray is on pace to be one of the highest passing yard rookies of all time he we've been saying if the passing touchdowns can come then he takes himself from already being a top 12 quarterback to being a top three type of quarterback for fantasy and the big difference is because he's been rushing the ball this that's why his baseline is is just so good. The first two weeks of the his season, uh, you know, his career, he didn't run the ball, and you were like worried. Oh, is he going to not use one that, of these guys? Use that skill set in the NFL? Well, that's been who's, out the window. Who's that's, got the skills? Come on, man! If you uh, got the skills, you got to pay the bills. Yeah, I mean that that did not last. Uh, the last month, the last four games, he's on pace for if that was a 16-game stretch for 884 rushing yards and eight rushing touchdowns, this is a, a a perfect play. I expect points back and forth. Kyler Murray is, you know, there's very few players I would start over. I mean, you know, you got Mahomes, you got Watson, but Kyler Murray should be thought of almost in that tier, I believe. Announcing Jared, Jared Garf. My quarterback started the week playing against the Atlanta Falcons defense. They've given up five QB one okay, weeks. Okay, okay. The fourth on. most passing yards, <laughs> the lowest sack percentage in the league. I have Carson Wentz and Jared Goff, and I played Jared Goff last week. 
Whoops. Thankfully, I still won. You have to convince me right now. These are start of the week. I just did. You think you did with just that? Five QB one weeks? Jason, we're on week seven. Okay, that's fair. But Wentz, Wentz has, I mean, would you start Jared Goff over Wentz? Yes. Okay. Wentz has five QB one weeks. So D Goff has, uh, you want me to look at Goff? No. He was, he was the Don't look at it. Okay. So, Don't look at it. Uh, it's hard to, it's so hard. I just, like, this is selfish. I'm not thinking about the foot clean. I'm just thinking about my lineup. I need to know. Who to start of those two? I've been toiling, and I can't make a decision. It's like when you're looking in the mirror, and you, you see what's actually there. But playing the Atlanta defense, that's like looking in a funhouse mirror. Things get very distorted. You don't, it's, it's not, a normal re, not a normal reflection. Your head gets all gigantic. Jared Goff is going to ball out. My running back start of the week is Matt Burita. He's also going to ball out. Uh, San Francisco has the number two run blocking offensive line according to football outsiders. Meanwhile, Washington, their D-line ranks 24th against the run. It's a match made in heaven, a run heavy team. And on top of that, a great matchup. I think Matt Breida can be locked in and, and should have a monstrous week. Who you got, Jay? Uh, my start of the week is Philip Lindsay. The, the Kansas City Chiefs without Chris Jones, who isn't going to play this week, have not been able to stop the run, and this is the recipe for beating them. That's why they've lost the last two games. And Philip Lindsay is electric. He's a great He's electric. running back. Booger, booger. Uh, he was a top 12 back last year. He got off to a slow start, you know, but he's been a top 12 guy three of the last four weeks. He has rushed for 20-plus yards on about 5% of his carries. That's the best of all qualifying running backs in the league. And... You know how my League of Record opponent has blown, just been... Yes. W let's say... They're the Magic 8-Ball. Nuclear? Yeah. Oh, four. Nice. Um, my opponent has Philip Lindsay. So... So start your Philip Lindsay. My wide receiver start of the week. Michael Gallup, he gets the Philadelphia secondary at home. Amari Cooper is projecting to be out. Currently, Michael Gallup is 7th in yards per game. He is 8th in big play percentage. That's going to happen to this team. And then... My honorary, because I, I struggled with this. I was wrestling myself all night. That sounds really, really bad. Mm. Well, well, well. <laughs> That's This is a family show, Mike. <laughs> oh, Jay Grizz. It does not approve, but it is DJ Shark. Do, 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 do. Oh, goodness. Uh, he's taking on the Bengals, and they will be without their starting corners. Their, their secondary is just depleted. So I'm go uh, DJ Chark is a great play this week. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll give two as well. I'm going to go with John Brown at wide receiver because this is. Wait, you're going two because I went two. Yeah. Because I wrestled with I wrestled with this. <laughs> there were there were two guys I I originally had in right. before I had John Brown. Uh, the player that I was uh, going to put was Brandon Cooks. I mean, we we've been talking about this matchup against Atlanta, and when I go, you know, for the start of the week, and you're looking for a big blow up play. You want speed, you want depth of target, you want air yards, and John Brown and Brandon Cooks are those type of players, and the matchup for both of these guys, the Dolphins and Atlanta, respectively, are are great. You, so I think you've got huge blow-up potential from those two uh, super-fast guys. So uh, John Brown and, and who's your, Cooks. Who's your tight end? My tight end is Jason Witten. Yuck. I get it. But the thing is, is this is an extraordinarily important game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles. They have to move the ball. They have to score. They, I mean, the, the Cowboys are, are at home, and Jason Witten is a safety valve. They don't have Amari Cooper in this game. They're, the, the Philadelphia Eagles are good at stopping the run, and I think that when you get to just about every third down, you're going to have these Jason Witten leakouts and Philly has not been great against tight ends. So this is just one of those plays where the targets are going to be there for Jason Witten. I'm, I'm, I think he's going to have seven-plus targets, and at tight end, that's all you can hope for. Tight end is difficult at the start of the week. It's a problem for us every single week, and it's crazy. I'm looking at my rankings right now. You, There's eight must-start 
Tight ends. Yes. I mean, normally we look at tight end and go, oh, it's it's disgusting. But let me go through this list for you. Travis Kelsey. Yep. George Kittle. Mm -hmm. Evan Ingram. Yep. Three. Zach Ertz. Four. Austin Hooper. Five. Darren Waller. Six. Mark Andrews. Seven. Hunter Henry. Eight. I mean, th those are must-start guys, and Evan Ingram is being very selfish and, and hogging the Arizona matchup, so you can't just go with that. And because of that, I just want to mention this tight end. It's it would be a 100% glory play, but things are trending in the right direction for Dallas Goddard. Since week four, he's at about 70% of snaps. And if you remember, he was hurt early on in the season. There was a whole bunch of talk in the offseason that the, that the Eagles are going to go two tight end sets. Then that got ruined because Goddard got hurt. Last, he is he's still third in yards after contact at the tight end position. Last week, he had the third most targets at the position. I'm just saying things are trending in the right direction for him. You may want to look at him. And in a world where there are eight, at least this week, eight must-start guys, if you're reaching for the bottom of the barrel, Dallas Goddard has upside. He has upside every week, and he has upside if if Zach Ertz were to miss time. Jason, are you prepared? Oh, <clears throat> me, me, me. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Oh, go ahead and take this one to the house, because coming off the bye, I'm going with the Bills, Stephen House, because... House, cuz. Did you multiply his name? I had to to make him work. <laughs> I did my best. That, that's your best? That, you, look. Uh, People are relying on you for your kicker analysis, For Jason. my kicker rhymes. And, and you, got a, you got a hot one right there. Thanks to the studio sponsor, as always, Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. And Evan Ingram signed... Mini helmet went for just $61. If you want to see what they got, hundreds of new things every single day. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. Good luck tonight if you have any Kansas City Chiefs or Denver Broncos. Make get sure him, you get them out of your flex. Get them out of your flex and into your starting roster. We will see you tomorrow for the rest of the matchups. And BALLERS on a budget. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.